November 9, 2021, Paige Weber has been in the business only a couple of years. I'm going to call it four. How am I doing there, Paige? So far, so good? It's yeah, no May, longer, isn't it? May will be four years. <laughs> it's not four yeah. years yet. She's no. in her fourth year, but all right. Uh, to say that Paige's ascent to superstardom and vector is, uh, is rapid is an understatement. Uh, she's already been promoted to a DVC division coordinator. She has uh, made a name for herself very quickly in, uh, I would say, uh, not the greatest of circumstances considering both the, the pandemic and, and all the aftermath after the fact, but Paige has been just doing an outstanding job, not only leading her local people, uh, but impacting even leaders like me. Uh, at SLC, she was our highest uh, so far viewed uh, after SLC in terms of uh, the recorded messages. Uh, this year, her, her message on recruiting really did, uh, I think, strike a nerve. And uh, that might be why we've got so many people attending us here today, attending the episode two of season two for the masterclass. So Paige Weber, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and I'm excited to spotlight you and uh, go a little deeper. Folks, we're gonna do this one a little differently than last week. We're going to um, have much more interaction today. So what I love is that we could do, we can change the, the dynamic week to week when we've got someone like Jay Brad Britton uh, or John Wasserman, I'm gonna let them just go and, and work really hard to not interrupt them. They've got so much content that even 90 minutes feels like it was short. And in this case, I believe that Paige could certainly do the same thing. And I also respect that she says, listen, I'm at my best when it's questions and answers. So why don't we do this? At the outset, you can use the chat uh, box to post your questions. Um, what I might ask you to do is again, keep your camera on. If you can, if you're driving, please do not have your camera on. I'm, I'm grateful that you're joining us today. So uh, short of that though, anything you can do to keep the cameras on and uh, we'll, we'll have you mostly muted for most of the session. However, if you do post a question in the chat, I'm probably gonna call on you so you can really ask uh, your question here live and in real time. Uh, before we hit record, we were talking about making the masterclass our informal learning place, a place where we can get together two or three times a month and we could just ask the questions that are on our hearts and we can go a little bit deeper. Some of my favorite moments from season one were not scripted. They were based on questions that you had. And sometimes the, the speaker like a Jeff Gambo was giving a throwaway story of something that really happened in his PLA about having a difficult conversation with one of his people. And it was like gold. It was just a beautiful moment here. So we're gonna try and give Paige as much of an opportunity uh, today. Paige, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to it. How about it? Like in a way that you're not looking forward to speaking at SLC uh, for a third time in three yeah, years, really? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready to get back on a stage yet. I like the, the Zoom talks. <laughs> Pretty sure our friends, uh, are, by the way, it might be, I would guess in person next year. So you think that Zoom is one thing. Uh, stepping out in front. It's not even the number of people because you've spoken in front of, it uh, sounds like I'm willing to bet it, a thousand people before, but uh, it's who's in the audience between owners and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Mount Rushmore of Vector, et cetera, like the people that you really respect and care about. So, all right. Easy, Easy. What's on your mind, Paige? What should we talk about today? Masterclass. Uh yeah, I'm excited. This is just going to be a jam session. Um, I'm excited to receive questions that I've never really thought about. I'm sure I'll get some of those. Um, I'm open to questions. I'm excited to learn from you guys at the same time. The questions that you're going to ask me, I'm sure I'm going to learn um, through them. So this will really just be a jam session. I'll open it up. I do love cameras on. Um, my expectations with my team, my division is that if they're ever on a call with me, their cameras are on. Again, like Trent said, if you're driving, be safe, don't turn them on, but um, would love to see faces. I love face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, just makes it a little bit more enjoyable for me, for you. Um, and I always feel like you get more out of an event when you are paying attention. So um, if you wanna put your cell phones on, do not disturb, put them away. I won't be looking at mine. Um, and just engage with me for the next hour and a half, hour, whatever we've got, because um, this is really your time um, for me to give to you guys. I am, um, I'm here to, to give as much as I can over the next however long we've got. So 
Um, I just kind of wanted to open it up with that stuff. Um, I know there was a couple questions posted in the, the Facebook group. Um, some people were like talking about culture and things like that. Um, I don't know if that's where we want to start. I can dive into like some like, hey, um, back to day one, building culture. How do you create culture? Um, or if there's like a dying question first that someone really wants me to answer, um, I can start that way. So this is your, your time with me. I'm here to give um, and go from there. Is let's start with some of the content uh, that you covered at SLC. And okay. uh, of course, if you've got back pocket questions from uh, yep. whether you've been texted those questions or from Facebook, that's great. Yep. Um, so let's start with this, because when we're doing speaker prep, one of our great challenges right now is, um, I would say, quality control when it comes to interview skill. Mm -hmm. I would think that uh, if we were good at this at one point, we're, we would say right now that we're not, that uh, I have the sneaking suspicion that too many managers are just giving their, their TLA people a script and saying, this is the interview, you're good, go get them, and, and not checking. And when we were talking, you were saying to me that you would, that you continue to drill your people. They run, I'm going to say at least a dozen, if not a couple dozen interviews in front of you until they could recruit you before you give them the seal of approval, before you stamp them and say, you're good to recruit. Paige, where did thoughts like this occur to you? Is this something that you dreamed up on your own? Is this something that you saw somebody else do? Where does that come from? I definitely think it came from my experience when opening up my office first. Um, I was given a script and it was like, okay, review this script, practice on your own. And then you're going to come in and do an interview live. Um, and it totally destroyed my confidence. I remember running my first interview for someone and like bawling my eyes out because I was like, I was so nervous and mine was in person. Right. So I had the girl in front of me and I was just all over the place. And, um, I just remember that feeling of like insecurity and being like, I could never do this job. I don't know how to run interviews. I could never recruit this person. She didn't show up for training. Like, and my manager was just like, you're going to get better. You're going to get better. Um, but, it, but it wasn't what I needed. So I really took a lot of like what I had learned over the past couple of years um, as a AM, as a branch and going, I don't want people to feel the way I felt after their first interview. I wanted them to feel excited and like, hey, Maybe I made a few mistakes, but I know I can get better. I wanted them to have that initial confidence of versus me saying, hey, you'll get better. You'll get better. I wanted them to know that they on their own could get better. So um, and part of it was I didn't want I was upset that that girl didn't show to training. And I was like, I think I just ruined her opportunity because I ran a really bad interview. Um, so part of it was I wanted to build confidence in my people. And the other part of it was that every person who stepped foot in my office felt like they had the opportunity to work here, that they were going to crush it, that they were excited. So it was a combination of both ends. I wanted it to be a win-win on both of them. So um, that's just kind of where I came up with the idea of like, all right, how does someone get more confidence? They just keep doing it over and over and over again. I really treat the assistant manager position like the rep position. Like, hey, your first couple are going to be a little rocky, but after like your third or fourth interview, you're going to be great. Like, you're going to be awesome at this. Like, tell me about your first um, demo with mom and dad. How bad was it? They're like, oh, it's terrible. I'm like, all right, then tell me about your second one. It was a little bit better. I made some mistakes. Tell me about your fifth one. And they're like, oh, by the fifth one, I had the whole thing memorized. I'm like, great. That is the assistant manager position. So giving them perspective of what it's going to look like, how it's going to feel in the beginning. And then after two weeks on the job, Remember, don't we always say this after two weeks on the job, people are going to be like, how long have you been working here for? Right. It's the same thing with the assistant manager position. Um, so just giving them something to relate to um, in that area. So that's kind of where it all came out for me, because I was like, man, if I didn't have the confidence that I had, if I didn't have like the the courage and uh, the grit to keep doing it and getting better at it, I don't know if I would have stayed because my confidence was just completely shot. Wow. So you didn't observe this. This is actually coming more out of uh, uh, a negative situation that you decided, hey, I'm going to stop this cycle and I'm going to do something different. That's uh, yeah. inspiring. So walk me through this. An assistant manager in your organization, you've identified them. They're going to start running interviews. What's the process? How do they learn the interview? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I have my interview recorded. I have one from last year and then I have an updated one from this year. Um, and they watch that interview to get the script. So I don't hand them the script and it's not because I want to be the big bad wolf that doesn't give them anything and they got to learn. Um, I don't give them a script because I remember when I was given scripts, I sounded scripted and it, it wasn't like me in a sense. Now, they can change up a word or two here, but they're really following for the entire script um, of what I'm saying during my interview, because there's some like nuances that I do, some hand motions. I'm even having them like, if I, if I put my hand up like this, like I, I want you to get involved with your hands um, in your interviews, right? So um, they'll watch my interviews until they get the script. And that's going to take a bit of time, right? You're not going to sit through one interview and have the entire script. So that's why I have it recorded. Um, so they can watch me live. They can watch me recorded, whichever works best for them. Once they have it, um, they jump on Zoom with me and they go through their script with me. Um, and they, the reason why I have it recorded as well is so they can see how the slideshow works and they can see the pauses that I take and, and they can see the breaths that I take, right? So it's, it's kind of, they're getting the flow when you click to the next slide. You know, it's a combination of things. So the first part of the interviewing process is just getting the script and understanding the flow so that when they're practicing with me, they can practice the flow of the interview. When do you click the next slide? How do you talk about pay? How long is their interview? Because their interview time should match my time. If my interview is 25 minutes, their interview should not be 45 minutes because now there is an incongruency amongst my office, right? Some people prefer a 45 minute interview. Some people prefer a 25 minute interview, right? But we need to keep it congruent along my office so that it's all the same. So they're, they're watching for the timing of everything. Um, once they get the script, they're jumping on Zoom with me. Um, we're going over the script with the slideshow. Um, and they'll do this until I'm, I'm ready to say yes. Now, there's some people that like after like their seventh interview with me, I was like, you're solid, like you can go. And then there's other people that it took them 20. It just depends on the person, how excited they are to interview, like how much work they're putting in. It's different amongst every single person. Um, there is no specific timeline in my opinion, right? It could take someone three weeks. It could take someone two days, as long as like they're ready to go. Um, and then once they get the interviewing down, then I teach them the post screen. Um, so I do one step at a time because the post screen, in my opinion, is the most important. Um, I think personally, I think you can run an okay interview. And if your post screen is a 10 out of 10, you're good to go. Um, but in my world, we run a 10 out of 10 interview and a 10 out of 10 post screen. Um, so the post screening is typically what I dig in the most. Um, that's where I'm asking them like really tough questions, not because they're going to get these tough questions every time, but so I can see them work on their feet. Um, a lot of the times I don't look for the right answers. A lot of the times I'm looking for how they got to that answer, right? So if I'm asking a certain question, it may not be the most perfect answer, but I'm looking for like, okay, how did they get here? Right. How did they answer this question? Why did they answer it that way? Where would they have gotten that response? So I'm, I'm kind of working backwards with them to see how they're getting. So post screens, I probably do about 40 post screens with them. Um, they watch me. I watch them. They watch me. I watch them because a lot goes into a post screen. You know, it determines how someone shows up to training. I'm expecting everyone to show up to training cameras on in a stationary spot. And that goes with my assistant managers, how they set that up. Um, I'm teaching them how do they set me up as the trainer for training, right? How are they talking about me? If I'm not running the interview, I want people to come into training kind of knowing a little bit about me. I'm pretty tough. Like, and I, I mentioned this in training, like I'm really in your face. Like it's going to sound like I'm yelling at you, but I'm not actually yelling at you. I need my assistant managers to let people know, Hey, Paige's personality is bold. She's loud. She's excited. Um, but she's awesome. I need them to kind of prep them on that because I, I could blow people out of the water, right? So how, if you are running training for your people, how are your assistant managers setting you up? What do they say about you? How do they introduce you in the post screen? Um, 
And then we have a list of questions. It doesn't necessarily mean that the questions are the same every time. There are certain questions we ask in the post screen every single time. Hey, our representatives start with people they know first. Who would you be excited to show Cutco to? That's not because we really care about who they want to show Cutco to. It's more so making sure they listen in the interview. Hey, do they know that they start with people first? Because how many times have you out of rep come to training and they're like, oh, we have to show people we know first. And what I can do when someone asks me that question is, hey, we asked you that in your post screen. And remember, like I can refer back to the interview. I can refer back to the post screen. So we're kind of like adding in certain questions that we typically get a lot in training so we can handle the objection before it comes. Um, and, you know, and just making sure all our post screens are pretty congruent, how we're setting up people for training, our expectations in training, um, you know, how training is going to go, giving them kind of like an outline of things, making sure we know their schedules, um, just kind of communicating with each other on that so that we set the people up for success. It's not really for us. It's making sure that everyone who steps foot in my office, we're serving them and we're setting them up for success because it's not fair if we do a bad job post-screening, we do a bad job setting people up for training, and then they don't get the experience that they deserve. Um, so it's, it's not looking at people as numbers, it's looking at them as human beings and go, okay, let's give every single person a fair shot, a fair opportunity, no matter their income, where they come from, their town, their high school, their college. If we do this for every single person, we can set everyone up for success. Um, so for example, Cole Freeman, Cole Freeman was not treated any differently um, in his post screen than someone else. Cole Freeman broke the national fast start record. He sold $43,000. He wasn't treated any differently. Right? In his post screen, he was just, all right, your name is Cole Freeman. You are no different than every single person that comes to our office. We're not going to treat you differently just because you have a great network or anything like that. We're going to give everyone a fair opportunity. So that's kind of the process with my system managers and, and there's standards with how do we treat people? How do we talk to people, right? Like I, there are standards with my staff of, you know, like making sure that we are being fair to every individual um, and giving people a shot, right? There's some people, I'm sure you guys have examples in your office, your division, they came in with 10 names and numbers and they crushed the job, right? It doesn't mean that they're any better or any worse than anyone else. So uh, making sure I'm running through that with my staff all the time, how we treat people and things like that. A lot to take in. One of the questions in the chat there from Dakota Peterson, he's asking, do you have a favorite question in the post? Mm, favorite question. I love asking people how they got into their major. Um, I look for connection in my post screens. Um, so one of my rules um, for myself and my people is if you can't make a connection with someone in a post screen, you didn't do your post screen correctly. Meaning if you can find something in common, if you can find something that stands out, something that you can connect with, um, you did it wrong. Um, so I'm looking for, okay, you're studying health science. Why did you go into health science? What's the story behind that? My post screens are like 10 minutes sometimes because I'm just spending time trying to relate to them, trying to be like, oh, you have siblings. Oh, like I'll ask them, hey, how many siblings do you have, by the way? Oh, you're one of four. I'm one of four. Like what number in line do you fall in? You're number three. I'm number three. Get out. Like, do you like being number three? I always hated it. I wish I was the oldest. Like just something to like let them know I'm human. Um, so my favorite questions are the ones where like we can just like connect um, or I can say like, oh, my gosh, you're studying engineering. Alyssa on our team, she's studying engineering. I would love to connect you with her. What engineering are you studying? She's here like just some sort of building the bridge between myself, people on my team so that they're like, wow, like this environment is awesome. This environment is cool. These people are like so down to earth. Um, that those are the kinds of questions I'm looking for. So it's not a great post screen until you've connected and you're like, ah, oh, that's awesome. Fun fact. Sometimes I ask people like, what's a fun fact about you? Um, or what's something people don't know about you? I'll never forget Andrew Colossi, um, who started in my branch summer. He worked as my sales manager. 
in 2020, 2021, he went branch um, and he's ready. He's determining if he wants to go DM or CSP. Um, I remember in my post screen, I said, what's something people don't know about you? And he said, one time I ate 91 pieces of sushi in one sitting. And it was like the best post screen ever. Like we were just having fun. I was getting to know him, um, showed up to training 12K fast start. He's over 150,000 in sales. Like it's just little things like that. And like, we can, to this day, we still talk about his post screen and how he was like, no one's ever asked me a question like that. So get creative, get fun. I mean, I don't know. They're college students. I just like to have fun with it. What I love, Paige, is that you have uh, really well thought out philosophies that these behaviors are supporting. And part of the reason I'm, I'm emerging that is uh, standard caveat, standard spoilers, warning, basically for everybody on the call. Please, no changes to any programs in your office without checking with your division manager. So, for example, if your interview is specifically designed so that you're not connecting and you're giving them more of the, the Heisman or the straight arm, uh, what you're hearing there would not be a good fit. That would not be compatible. So what I'm suggesting is that um, you don't change any of your programs without checking with your DVM. They might be the right idea at the wrong time. They might be the wrong idea for this program. They might be awesome, in which case, let's make sure everybody in your division uh, gets to make the switch as well. So no changes without checking with your DVM. Um, a question here. I love this question. Thank you, David Morales. He's asking, how do you redirect someone who is developing bad habits with the interview? So you mentioned, hey, somebody's maybe 40 before you get certified or, or get the stamp from you. Uh, if you see somebody that's going awry, and I would assume, Paige, but better to ask than assume, you can tell in five minutes whether they're on track or not, right? I mean, in certain cases, how long do you, I guess to make a two-part question, how long do you let them get before you just kind of, all right, let's, 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 let's stop there. <laughs> You've had enough fun. You're not done. You're not, you're not fully baked yet. How long do you typically let them go before you stop them, number one? Number two, if you can just see that they're on a, a rough trajectory, how do you redirect them? Yeah, first question within like the two minutes. If their opening is not my opening, it's, we're done. Like, um, and part of it is curious before critical. Um, you know, sometimes like you, you have to know that, you have to know your people. So this is a great question because I had someone on my team like this and it was harmless, right? He was just like, I'm struggling to keep up with the interview and type. Like it was more like a learning thing for him. And he was like, hey, I'm just struggling. So at that point I was like, hey, come talk to me about that. I'll give you my script and we'll work through it together. Um, sometimes your people just need a little bit of help. It's knowing their learning habits and how do they learn best. Um, and it doesn't mean they're a good or bad interviewer. It just means they're a little bit different and they just need a little bit more help. So a lot of the times it's curious. It's like, hey, um, I want to stop you right here. I'm noticing your intro is not my intro. Tell me about that. Uh, do not like my intro? Do you think you have a better one? It's just kind of understanding where they're coming at. And if they're like, hey, I think I have a better one, it's talking them through that. Okay, tell me what you think would be a better intro. Because sometimes there's people on my team that have great ideas. And I'm like, I didn't even think of that. That's a great idea. Or sometimes it's like, hey, I love that you're thinking outside of the box. I love that you're creative and you see a better intro. What I'm going to ask is that we continue with my intro for now. And I'm going to be open to changing it in the next couple of months, in the next campaign. Let's just stick with this for right now. I will help you get the script. We will work together because when you're on my staff, we're a team. Like we lock arms, like we are a team, whether that means so-and-so helps this person, whether it's me, whether it's someone like um, last night, we had a call with my um, division staff, anyone in the division that's on staff. And we went over our new standards and we create a document and we sign the standards. And like, one of them is that like, we've got each other's backs, no matter what, and we're going to support each other. So um, that's part of it. And redirecting that. So that's like the first part, I guess. So it's like within the first two minutes, because if they're not following my intro, they're not following anything. And I already know that. Um, and I'll ask them to share their script with me so I can see it. Um, part of it is like, I just need to see where they're at. I need to see what they're copying or, um, you know, if they were paying attention, if they missed a part, you know, sometimes people's brains just go elsewhere while they're doing stuff. Um, redirecting people with bad habits. Um, you know, it's, it's, you've got to take time 
to develop them. They need more support from you versus challenge. So in the case of one of my managers who wasn't following, we had to sit down and I would say, okay, I'm going to role play the peg. All right, I'm going to do it right now with you. I want you to role play back. We had to break up the interview section by section. So yes, it took me more time. However, he's still around. He's still here. He's excited to open up his district office in May. And I believe if I didn't take the time to give him support and to help him and encourage him, that probably wouldn't be the answer right now. So sometimes you just got to take more time. Hey, I'm going to role play this. Then you're going to do it. All right. Ask me questions about this part. Let me tell you the feel of this part. This one should be like chipper and excited and happy. When we're talking about the pay, we're, we're serious, right? We want them to know the difference between base and um, the incentive pay, right? And then when we talk about why we love the team, like we're speaking from the heart, close your eyes if you have to, like, just tell me why you love the team. Um, and if that means we got to change up some of the verbiage, if he has a different reason for why he loves this job versus I do, that's totally cool. We'll change that up. You know, I'm, I'm flexible. I'm flexible for my people because my people are flexible for me. So if they see there's flexibility in my leadership, there's going to be flexibility with them on, hey, all right, I totally get it. You want to keep the opening that way. We'll leave it that way. And then come campaign number two, we'll, we'll talk about fixing it. This is great stuff, Paige. I hear you saying that you invite the collaboration and you even in times will affirm or commend oh. right, that, that feedback. And <laughs> so this is the yes and, right? Hey, this is great. We're going to keep this for, for now, but I might factor this in for the next change. So this still, uh, I think, validates the person bringing feedback. And for those of you that are attending some of the exchange training coming up, uh, they talk about how the answer lies within the system. So mm -hmm. the people in your organization are going to have the, the ways to iterate and to move forward. And uh, what I love about what Paige is doing here is she's inviting that feedback. And even if she's not going to use it right now, she's got it. And by affirming people as they bring that feedback um, and honoring them when we say, hey, right now we're going to keep our process uh, and thanks for bringing this. So we're not going to use this right now. It's the yes and. At the same time, that gives them, it paints, the, I guess, a, a great path going forward for them to be able to come back and still bring other, other feedback. Um, Paige, we've got a request to actually do a post. Yeah. Would you be open to doing this? Would that be fun? Yeah. Uh, the person who requested oh. it is Lexi, who has no voice. So I love that she's here uh, in camera, bodily and spiritually, she's here. All right. But I'm not going to make her do the post with you. Um, can I have someone Lindsay, to, can I have someone to has, role play, Lindsay? Lindsay has the next question though. So I would like to spotlight Lindsay. Uh, if, if Lindsay doesn't object, no, where are you, Lindsay? Fine. All right, so Lindsay, I'm gonna spotlight you as well. Where are you? There we go, boom, okay. Spotlight, add. So I'll just let you do it, Paige, you know what to do. Yeah, let me, um, hey Lindsay, I'm gonna pull, actually, I'm just gonna make up stuff for you. Just kind of like go along with it for me. I'll pull up an application and oh, you go to the school, just say yes. Be be a, be an easy. This actually, this actually raises another question. A page when you say, Hey, I'm gonna pull up an application, yeah. you use their application in the post screen. So you're yeah. actually using yeah. information that they've given you to connect with them. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I can show you guys my it's very simple questions. It's like um, their name and um, where they go to school, their major, why would they be excited about the job? I'll, um, I'll show you guys it so you can see the questions I ask. Um, but yeah, I want to know a little bit about them before I have a conversation with them. Just so it's nothing like crazy, um, but I just want to get to know them a little bit. So um, there's connection built, you know, how they heard about the position, social media, who'd you hear about it from, things like that. So um, cool. Lindsay, I'm going to give you a call. Hey, Lindsay, this is Paige from Cutco. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. Are you free to chat for a couple minutes? Do you have yeah. some time? Yes, absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I received your application. I just want to go over it with you, ask you some questions, get to know you a little bit better. Um, I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask me any questions as well. Now, essentially, Lindsay, if you like me, I like you, we're going to make something work. If not, we won't. Is that cool? Sounds good. Beautiful. Awesome. So I just want to get to know you a little bit better. So I heard um, you heard about the position through social media, right? Yep. One of my friends DM'd me on Instagram. Oh, 
awesome. Who DM'd you? Libby did. Libby, great. How do you know Libby? She's awesome. Uh, college. College. Okay, so you guys go to Ryder University together? Yes, we do. Awesome. Okay, and what year are you at Ryder? I'm a sophomore. A sophomore. So is this your first semester in person with COVID and everything? Yep, we are back on campus. Nice. How's that going? Are you liking it? Is it like hard to adjust? Yeah, it's like hybrid right now. So it's kind of cool, but it's okay. nice being back. Yeah. How many classes do you have in person? Uh, three of them and then two are hybrid or okay. online. Okay, cool. And you're studying secondary education and chemistry? Yep. My goal is to be a chemistry teacher. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so tell me more about that. How did you like choose chemistry, education? Um, tell me more about getting into that, that role for you. Yeah, so I, I loved chemistry in school and, you know, I always had a great connection with my teachers and wanted to make an impact. So that's now my goal. Yeah, awesome. Is that something like your parents do or your parents in education? Or are they in something totally different? Totally different. Okay, gotcha. That's pretty funny. Do you have any siblings, anyone that is in the education field or is it just based on passion? Uh, just passion. No, no siblings. Awesome. Do you have any idea like what grade you want to teach? Um, I'm thinking maybe high school. High school? All right, cool. So you want to deal with the older kids. You don't want to deal with the, the younger ones. <laughs> yeah, you got it. All right, cool. So um, tell me a little bit more about what excited you about the position with Cutco. Um, I love the flexibility being a student. Um, and then also just the the income potential, how you know we have the guaranteed base pay, but there's no cap with the commission. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And why is the income important to you? Uh, so I'm paying for school right now. So having this ability to, you know, pay my way through the semester, also spending money is, is a big motivator for me. Yeah, Lindsay, I can definitely relate. I, um, I went to Quinnipiac University and um, I had to pay my way through school. So I know how important that was uh, for me as well to be able to pay my way through school. So I can definitely appreciate that about you, uh, that you're someone who wants to um, build some, some good income. So um, tell me... Um, a little bit about just looking at your application here. You played a sport in, are you playing a sport in college or uh, did you just play a sport in high school? Uh, just in high school. I, I do it sometimes for fun, uh, but more of like, you know, wreck on my own, not, not with the college. Yeah. And it's soccer, right? You're playing soccer. Yep. Love soccer. All right, cool. So you're just doing it like recreation in college just to kind of keep up with it. Yeah, you got it. Okay, cool. Um, now, our representatives start with people that they know first. So who would you be excited to show Cutco to first? Uh, definitely my parents, um, a few of my aunts and uncles, and then my grandparents. My grandma just loves to cook. So I know she's going to appreciate Cutco. Okay, cool. Lindsay, have you ever heard of the product prior to this? Do you own it? Do you know anyone who owns it? Have you seen it before? Nope, never heard of it before the uh, DM on Instagram. Yeah, I can relate. I had no idea what Cutco was either. I just kind of went in for the interview and I was like, all right, Cutco sounds good. Um, beautiful. All right. So um, now last couple of questions for you. Um, why would you be a good fit for this position over a different applicant? Yeah, it's a great question. I think I've had previous experience in a lot of like retail jobs and customer service. So just interacting with tons of people. Um, I love doing presentations. And I think I have a great balance of being like independent. I can work on my own, but also playing in soccer um, or being an athlete. We had to work on teams. So I have this great balance of the two. Cool. And last thing for you, Lindsay, what skills would you be looking to obtain here that are going to help you in your future as a um, teacher, especially in chemistry? Yeah, so definitely like public speaking, um, knowing how to, again, work with all different types of people, but also make sure like my time management skills are good, planning out different lesson plans and things like that, um, and just building my confidence with public speaking. Okay, cool. Now, what questions do you have for me, Lindsay? None. I'm good. All right, cool. Well, um, I think you can tell I'm pretty confident in our training. I feel like I can train anyone to do this position if they have the right attitude, if they have the right work ethic. Um, that being said, I don't want just anyone on my team. So when I'm looking to accept someone for the position, I'm looking for a couple different things. Um, first thing I'm looking for, Lindsay, is uh, can I add value? And what I mean by that, I want to be able to add value both in and outside the business, personally, professionally, financially. I feel like if I can't add value to someone, I don't think they're a good fit for us. 
Um, another thing I'm looking for is, do I see them working well with our team? Do I see them fitting in with our team? Um, meaning, do I see them working well with myself, my staff, the rest of the team? Um, because I want to make sure that someone's a good fit for us, as well as I want to make sure that we're a good fit for you, too. Um, last thing, Lindsay, as a woman, I absolutely love working with women. Um, part of one of my goals as a leader in this company is um, working with more women and building them up. Um, I think society does a really great job at tearing women down instead of actually building them up. So I truly appreciate and love the opportunity to get to work with women and give them the confidence that they need, because I definitely know I lacked in confidence in high school and college. So um, I know this conversation is pretty short between the two of us, but it's because I've done a lot of these and um, it's really easy for me to tell who would and wouldn't be a good fit for my team almost immediately. And I do think with the proper training on our end and hard work on your end, I think you'd be really great here. So with that being said, um, Lindsay, I would love to offer you a spot on our team. Um, reason being, there's a couple things that stand out to me. Um, for someone who wants to be a teacher, I think that says a lot about you. Um, you know, just going into the education field, I know how tough that is, you know, working with kids and, um, you know, just being able to interact, especially with high school students. I know how difficult they can be. So um, I think that says a lot about you. Um, I also love that you're looking to um, gain some income, uh, gain uh, some resume skills as well. Um, you know, just someone who wants to work their way through school, pay their way through school. Um, that, that's something I did. So I can really respect that. And I appreciate that about you. So um, I think we would work well together. I think you'd be a great fit for our team. And I'd love the opportunity to work with you and help you hit your goals. So um, I'd love to offer you the position. How does that sound? Woo awesome. Welcome to our team. I'm excited to have the opportunity to work with you. That's pretty much a post screen. And then we would set her up for training. Um, you know, let's go over our schedules, all that good stuff. So that is a post screen. Hopefully that helped. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we take a moment to drop into the chat something that you notice about the post? Let's just make it specific. I'm already seeing things like, okay, that was awesome, which is true. Rob Chung says, connecting and evidence-based reasoning to the highest degree. Uh, Rob, would you expand a little bit more on that? Because I'm agreeing with you there. And can we also give Lindsay uh, some jazz hands? Just thank you so much for being a great support there. And we'll come back to your question in a moment here. But uh, Rob Chung, I'm going to spotlight you here because I'd, I'd like to, uh, I'd like you to post your question here. So if you could unmute Rob and I'll spotlight you now. Sure. Um, well, the connecting part, I don't know if I need to go into too much of that, but the what I liked was when you were talking about why they'd be really good on a team, um, you connected it back to the fact that they're going to be a teacher and figuring out, you know, here's why teachers really would do well in this kind of a position. Um, and I really like that because I always thought, like, why not connect it to their major and some, you know, give them value as to why this job's going to help them with their current. And we always say that hey, we're going to get, add value to what you're currently doing, but we don't tell them why, right? So they have to kind of figure it out. But right away, that's being done immediately. And, I, and I'm a person who I like evidence. I like giving me actual reasoning, not just, uh, you know, fluff behind it. So I really enjoyed that. Wow. Thanks, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm going through more feedback here and questions. One from, uh, I believe it was Florence. She's asking, is this remote interview or Apex page? I do an Apex and then um, phone call for the post screen. Phone call afterwards. Okay, so it's not via Zoom necessarily. It's always phone call? Yep, always phone call. Okay, good to know. Um, Johnny St. Pierre said, whoa, which was said more than once. Uh, that was awesome, also said more than once. Uh, Hans says, I need this recorded by 11 o'clock so I can <laughs> use it for my staffing tonight. Make it so. Um, I don't know if we'll have it on YouTube by tonight, but I can absolutely get you the Zoom recording ASAP. Uh, wow. What Hans said, which is fun. All right. So to anybody, by the way, who needs a recording immediately, just email me tbooth at cutco.com. I'll send you the, the Zoom recording and everybody else. Uh, if you're watching the recording of this on YouTube, don't email me. Uh, unless you have questions, but don't email V for that because it'll already be up. But uh, some of those tweaks, Stuart says that some of those tweaks in your verbiage are money. Definitely going to change a couple things in mine. I guess his DVM's right here. So, all right. 
Any reason why a phone call, uh, Paige, instead of uh, instead of Zoom or, or uh, spoke signal or text, Florence is asking. Yeah, uh, I mean, we just did this starting in COVID because we had way too many applicants and we just needed to get through them pretty quickly. We just haven't changed. That's all. Just Okay, so it's not necessarily science-based answer. It's no. just, hey, it's just quicker to get, get yeah. through We'll typically look through applicants. We'll determine like who we want to call first. We'll call certain people first. We'll wait for some people. Um, like I give them a two hour window. We'll call you within two hours because if there's 20 people and there's only two of us post screening, it's going to take me a little bit of time. Um, sometimes I'll make the sharper kids wait until the very end because I just want them to like, they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't think you were going to call. Thank you so much. Um, or sometimes I'll call them first if I want to spend like 15 minutes on the phone with them. It just really depends. I'll look at the schools. It doesn't change any of my questions. It doesn't change my post screen. It's just more like, all right, who, who do I need to spend a couple more minutes with? Is there someone from a certain school that I really want to recruit that I want to call? Um, and if there's a second post screener with me, I determine who they call. So I'm looking at it. I'm like, all right, there's 20 of us. These are the 10 I'm taking. You take the other 10. Um, I'm, I'm taking the best people because I know I am the strongest recruiter, not saying my other people aren't because they're fantastic. I just want to um, take some of the other people. It does, it does make sense. And you've started to answer Lindsay's other question that she reposted, which I totally, thank you, Lindsay, because I was going to scroll up because I want this question. Because we've all had that person that rolls in from that school or that part of town and you know they're valedictorian of the yeah. you know and you're like you're yeah, like giddy yeah i don't i actually <laughs> don't treat them differently because i don't want them to think they're special right. <laughs> like, right. i don't i don't want them to think i'm <laughs> ruling all over them because they go to my best high school it's like i know i'm gonna recruit them because i'm great and that's it you know it's like they're i'm not gonna recruit them because they're sharp they're not sharp like i'm gonna recruit them because i know how to recruit people and i put my best foot forward and that's why i run my best interview every single time i my interview of the day is gonna be the best thing i run all day it's like just how i show up like just how i speak you know it's like i'm intense and it's just because i want people to feel that about me um you know, how I talked at SLC is how I talked during my interviews. And if that like scares people, that's okay. I want them to be a little bit scared of me. I want them to be like, this girl knows what she's doing. Like she's going to run an awesome training. Um, and then I preface it in my training. I'm like, Hey, you know, some of you are really going to love me. Some of you aren't going to like me. My goal is not to get you to like me. If you like me, that's a win-win. But if you don't like me, that's okay. I don't, I don't need you to like me. My goal is to help you at your job. My goal is to get you over $10,000 in sales and make two grand, whether you like me or not. Um, so I'm, I'm acknowledging the fact that my energy, my, my demeanor is not everyone's cup of tea. And that's the same thing. I'm like, Hey, some of you might like Sam more. Some of you might like Steph more and that's okay. That's what makes the world go around. Right. When you go to Amazon, you don't like everyone at Amazon, right? They're at Kohl's or at the grocery store. Like everyone has different personalities, which makes the world go round. Our job is not to get you to like us. You're going to end up loving us. I'm not worried about that, but our goal is really to help you hit your goals. And that's our goal at the end of the day, you know, to create that environment that allows them to hit their goals, regardless of if they, they love me, they like me, they hate me, right? Doesn't bother me. I want to I want to put a, an exclamation point on this specific moment here, Paige, because one of the things you're saying is is you need to be comfortable in your own skin and kind of know who you are and perhaps know how you're being perceived. And if you're Paige Weber, you know, uh, Jersey girl, like you kind of right. So what works for you might not work for everybody yeah. necessarily. So I wouldn't want everybody to just copy precisely what Paige is doing, but the process of knowing who you are, right? So. Uh, it was no skate ipsum is is the Latin know thyself when you know who you are and part of that is how are people perceiving me and being intentional with uh, kind of baking that into the recipe of how are we going to post somebody right so mm -hmm. Paige who by the way is wildly likable I mean it would be a superpower is just your likability by the way first say I'm not concerned whether you like me or not is that's actually a very uh, I would say earned push away mm -hmm. right. And, and, she, and she means it, by the way. She's, she's not just saying it because she's just trying to be impressive or verbally manipulative, right? She's saying she's she's not concerned for that, and you can tell. And there is something I would suggest that is very powerful when it comes to attracting the right people, 
And that is if you're needy, if you're going goo goo gaga, the kid from the rock star school gets that a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, it, it's, it's a, it's a big turnoff for the most part. Right. So you don't want to be all like, Oh, you go to Harvard. I'm so excited. Or Princeton, right. You, that's actually, is that in your territory page, Princeton? Mm-hmm. Right. So it's one of those things where you're like, Oh, we have a Princeton. I'm going to make them wait. I'm going to put them on, on the cooler for 15 minutes before I post them. Right. Because they got to earn this year. Right. And, and also this is something that was said during uh, Jay Brad Britton's original um podcast uh, on the CLSK, it, it, he was saying, uh, we give people an opportunity, and he has actually said it last week as well, we give people an opportunity, the every Joe, right, the every man, right, every Jane, the average person here, this is a level playing field. I will tell you, I had a person one time in training that for that sharp kid, that was like, look at the people around here, he was leaving training, he was basically quitting in front of me, and he, at least he showed up, but he was like, yeah, I'm leaving, you just hire everybody, he goes, look at some of the people in there, I said, oh, you're judging the people in there. Because they're going to sell more Cutco than than you are, if you're especially if you're quitting, by the way, right? But it, like you're going to judge them based on how they're showing up. Fascinating, you know. And for me, I didn't come from the the, the rich school or a private school even. I, I didn't come from the right tracks type of thing. So for me, I've always kind of had a bit of a, sh- a chip on the shoulder, and that's kind of for me, kind of like Paige that resonates with me, which is like, hey, everybody's equal here. My job is to put them at the free throw line and see what happens. My job is this is this is fourth grade basketball. Everybody gets to play, right? And we're gonna let desire sort out who gets to stick around and who eventually makes JV and varsity, but everybody's gonna get a chance to play. Paige, crushing it. Is it amazing that we could actually, because of this master class format, we could have an hour on the post screen interview? <laughs> we could do an hour on one little section this would never be an slc topic although it deserves an hour and this is a master class uh on this page thoughts that are emerging for you as you're reading through some of the chat here and hopefully everybody can uh, i could see page reading through and scrolling through the chat there so i took a little bit of time here but page thoughts that are emerging for you as you're engaging in this conversation no i think this is great this is like reminding me of little things that i do during my my post screen a lot of this stuff it's it's great that you guys asked this stuff because a lot of it is very natural to me. Um, and sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, so it, it's good just to like talk through it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I do ask that question for a specific reason. Um, because a lot of it is just like, why wouldn't I ask that question? But then I'm like, actually, there's a reason I do. So when I'm teaching people post screening, when I'm teaching people interviews, when I'm even teaching people training, there's the whys behind everything because that gives them like, okay, there's a reason why we talk about the pay like this. There's a reason we talk about scheduling like this, right? There's got to be a why behind everything you say and everything you do so that when you're teaching people, it's actually easier to teach them, believe it or not. When there's a why behind something, it's like, yep, this is why we do it. And then it's like, okay, we're going to do that. You know, there's no questioning. There's no like, are you sure we do it that way? Why not this way? Because you, you've got the evidence to support it. So whatever questions you ask, whether they're similar to mine, whether they're totally different, make sure when you're teaching people, you have the whys behind it. The reason I ask them about their school and their college is to kind of figure out like where they came from. You know, I like to figure out what their parents do for a living. You might've noticed I threw that question in there. Um, And I don't do that with everyone. Sometimes it's like, you got to feel out the person. And I ask it in such a nonchalant way, like, hey, is that what your parents do for a living? You know, because I'm trying to understand them better. I'm trying to get like more background on them and and what their parents do and just kind of like the overarching of who they are. So um, if you're slipping in questions like that or certain things, make sure you've got the reasoning to help your people. So as a post screen, I got on interviewing, post screening, again, talk to your DVM, do not change anything. Um, And if you ever want to watch an interview, ask your DVM if it's cool, you can come watch one of my apexes. I'm cool with that. Do you do anything after the interview for people scheduled for two weeks away? We just don't schedule them two weeks away. I get them in training that week. We just don't do that. Yeah, we just why? Don't. Why? They're not going to show. I could do the best post screen in my entire life. I could spend thirty minutes on the phone with them, but the chances of them showing, like I believe, like you've got a hundred percent chance, and every day that passes decreases that number. So we just don't do two weeks. 
Like, so if somebody just can't come this week, you just don't schedule them or I will call them. It's like, okay, we're going to like reschedule this conversation for next week. Okay. Okay. So how about if we go back, I know you answered this already in the, in the chat here. Somebody's asking, Hey, you got non-students or older applicants. Same what question. changes, if any, Nothing. same, same questions, non-students. Um, I just asked them like, Hey, why, why did you choose the not school path? Like, I, I'm just curious because then I can relate. Yeah, I went to school and I, I stopped during my junior year. It doesn't mean I'm against school. It just means I made that choice. So I can relate to them or I can share about someone on my team who's not in school. Um, people that are older applicants, like, I'm, I'm just like, why do you want to work here? Like, you know, like there's no BS in that conversation. It's like, you tell me why you want to work here and why I should hire you type of thing, because they're not looking, in my opinion, for like the goo goo gaga. They're kind of just like, like no rah rah. It's more just like, why do you want to work here? Why are you excited about this? Like, I'm more to the point with them um, because they're either going to show or they're not going to show, in my opinion. Um, so I spend a little bit more time um, asking I'm trying to get the younger people to sell me a little bit more on why I should accept them. Sure. Um, is it reasonable to assume, Paige, that the older crowd, instead of going to school questions or sports, you might ask them more about their work experience yeah. and yeah. how that qualifies them here? Yeah. All right, so you're still finding ways to connect. You just find it, okay. you are adjusting. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So it's not I'm business as usual. Them. Yeah. And all like older applicants, non-school, I'm like, hey, I know I talked a lot about students in my interview. We work with tons of people that are out of school. We have CSPs, like we have district managers. Like I'm, I'm talking about that. I'm kind of like planting a little bit of a seed there. Um, I'll, I'll put my email in this chat. You can reach out to me um, if you want to. I run all my interviews on Apex as of right now. So if you email me, we can schedule a time where, where you can sit in on one. Um, either myself or one of my my assistant managers. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, uh, again, this is just our group because we don't publish even our YouTube channel. It's pageweber0 at gmail.com. So you can reach out to Paige or uh, tbooth at cutco.com. And I'd, I'd love to support you as well. Um, just to clarify, Celeste is asking, uh, December, you do the, the big dance, you do the January program. Um, what do you, so for example, you, hey, I don't schedule two weeks out. That shifts That's a little smart. bit with the big dance, right? Yeah. It's a little bit different for the big dance um, because we're we're purposely building towards that, but I want to get in, a, I want to get a kid in for training ASAP. If that means we send them it's a It's available. Yep. Um, if there's like someone, like if we really have to set someone out that far, we will, but like we, we try to work around conflicts as best we can. Um, but big dance, we, we do set out. So I made a career out of about a 35% show to training. You're telling me in the chat here that your expected show to training is 70%. Absolutely. It, I, my expectation is 100. Like my, my expectation for my people is 100%. Um, and I'm talking to them about it. Does it mean that that's exactly what happens? But expectations create reality. So if I'm talking about 100% every single week, our job is to get every single person to show for training. It is your job. Like this is your job. You should be freaking awesome at your job. You should get everyone here. It's like having those expectations and creating those standards so that we fall short at 70. Mm -hmm. It's like set high, fall short. But like, if I'm like, yeah, my expectation is 50%, you're going to get a 30% show to training. Like it's, it's setting the bar really high for your people and continuing to work and help them. It's your job to help them. It's your job to build their skills. It's your job to give them that confidence. So if someone is like really struggling with interviews, I'm going to sit in on their interviews. I'm going to figure out what it is. It's, it's my responsibility. They don't know what to do. I am I am their key person. So my expectations are 100% show every single time, which is why we fall between like the 80 and 60 mark, typically. Wow. And the fact that you spent so much time mastering this particular piece of the business, not just you, but your people as well. The fact that any of them going out to run interviews themselves have been certified by you and have been interviewed until they get it, until they can recruit you. So until they're like, I love that answer, by the way. How many times will you watch the interview? The answer is until <laughs> they can recruit me, which I, I to celebrate that. But the idea is that you're, you're mastering it. So it's not just the interview's good. The interview's mastered at this point, right? 
Yep. Exactly. That's fun. That's fun. All right. Oh, I feel like we could keep going here on post interview, but we're hitting all kinds of things here, including philosophies, how we train our TLA. We're hitting things like being comfortable with yourself. We're hitting things like ongoing training. So if somebody's numbers slip, we bring them back in and we will retool. Um, Paige, can we talk for a little bit about just so because a lot of this seems to be more art than science. So it's not necessarily word by word script. It seems to be a little bit more uh, the inner game of tennis. If you notice a great interview, you'll be able to actually follow through and do some of these things here. I know that lots of people here are having to slip out based on exchange training and interviews, et cetera, here. I, so I don't think we'll go for the full 90 today. I think we'll probably try to clip things in a little bit and give you some time back here, Paige. But I think we've compacted a lot of good content in a short amount of time. Paige, if you were to talk about some of the, the growth um, areas that you've done personal growth in the past, what kind of books have, or authors have inspired you? What do you do to kind of take action on some of the things that you know, whether it be journaling or, or whatever? What are you doing to grow? Paige Weber. Um, I think when I was like brand new, I think of like a lot of when I was brand new, because that's what kind of like created everything. So, um, if you haven't like dove into personal growth and like developing yourself, like I would call yourself a beginner, like, Hey, even though I've been a DM for five years, like I'm going to be brand new at this. So, um, when, I first opened, like when I was brand new, one of the things like I, I did a lot of development outside and a lot of development inside speaking inside first, I did like a ton of cross training and learning from other people. And that doesn't necessarily mean I went in person to their office or things like that. Um, I lived on vector connect videos. Like I'm telling you, I watched so many vector connect videos just to like build my skills. Um, because part of me, I was not the best sales rep. Um, management is where like my heart always took me and I struggled in the sales area. So part of my job was to get better in both of the areas. So really building on my sales skills, really building on PDI, really building on PCs, you know, all of those things that sometimes we forget about. Um, so tons of Vector Connect videos, um, talking to other people, reaching out to other people. What I love so much about this company is that people will help. And I think we forget that, um, you know, if someone reaches out to me, like I'm going to respond and send them a recording or tell them just to come jump on my training or whatever. Like there are so many people out there, no matter how busy they are, um, they will respond to you and they will let you watch things and they will send you recordings and um, so many great things. So I really took advantage of that. I probably took too much advantage of the fact that people were willing to help. Um, I like, I, I just no longer like listen to music at the gym or in my car. Like it was just a podcast of some sort, an audio book, um, just to kind of like kill two birds with one stone. I'd be able to like get work done or be at the gym and listen to a podcast, listen to an audio book. Um, and a lot of it was more like developing um, me as a person, like the, the audio book so that I could be a better leader for my people. I feel like I was put on this earth to like serve people at a really high level, to lead people in and outside of the business, like personally, professionally, financially. So I really wanted to take that to a high level. Um, some books that like I've read that just like have really given me a lot of confidence. You are a badass. Like just love that book. If I'm ever feeling like in a slump, I think that just like gives me like really good positive energy that like I can put out to people. Um, how to win friends and influence people. I'm reading that with my TLA group. I make my TLA people read that with me um, more so because it's a book of life. Uh, the reason I do it now is so that um, they can start implementing little things from that book. That book has a lot of great things, right? There's so many things and it's hard to implement everything. So I give them that book now to start reading it um, so that by the time they're 25, they're 26, they're 27, they can nail down that whole entire book. So it's giving it to them at like a younger age so that they're like, all right, I'm better at smiling at people. So when they're 25, 26, they're like, I do every single thing in this book. Um, I'm trying to think what else have I read? I can create a list. I'll send pictures to Trent. He can send it out of all these books that I've read, but just like fueling your brain with really good things. And sometimes like I learn things about relationships. Like it's not just like work driven. Like you can personally grow in tons of different areas that aren't like 
all right, how to get rich and how to do all these things. It's like, how can you be a better friend? How can I be a better daughter, a better sister, right? Um, you know, just like things that I can learn outside that I can apply in all different areas. So um, it, it was like life-changing for me. I think uh, my conversations with people are better. I feel like I'm leading at a higher level. Um, and I think I'm giving more now than I was giving before. Um, you know, I can share wisdom versus advice, like um, because of the stuff I'm learning. And I think that's what keeps people around when they feel like their leader is growing at a rapid level and they can follow. Um, when you start to plateau, like your people are like, I'm outgrowing this person and I don't want to outgrow them. So it's always making sure that you are outgrowing your people so that they can keep following you um, as you move up the ladder in, in development. So fired up. It's really good. So Paige, it wasn't that long ago. We had a lunch. We were talking about, hey, I'm thinking about uh, not going back to school and just doing yeah. this DM thing. And all of a sudden you've done it. Any regrets? No. I mean, you're in your 20s, right? You feel pretty good about that decision at this point? I, I definitely am. Um, and part of like when I, this was the hardest decision of my life. I like to share this with people because this wasn't like a, I woke up and I switched. Um, something I learned whenever I'm making a decision from here on out, um, I created a lot of anxiety in my head. Maybe some of you guys can relate of like, I just had it all in my head and I didn't know what to do. Whenever I'm making a decision from here on out, I make a T-chart. Um, pros and cons. And when you can visually see things, making a decision is a lot easier. Um, and, you know, I told myself, I'll give it a year. I said, let's do this DM thing for a year. Let's try it out. School's always going to be there. Um, and Vector is always going to be here at the same time. You know, if you listen to my Changing Lives podcast, I talk a little bit more about that. But um, it's been an incredible experience. I love the district manager opportunity. Um, you know, the people that we get to be around, like I, I just love what this company offers. And I know I will not be leaving anytime soon because of what the company offers back to me. Um, so much development, so much growth that I have to do um, for myself before I can even consider um, anything else. So I'm excited to keep growing myself here in the company and um, developing my, my skills for, for future me to thank. Well, Paige, you bring a ton of humility, and it's not false, as I've seen you in many different contexts. And one-on-one, -on -one, I appreciate the fact that one-on-one, -on -one, we get the same page that we get at the master class. So thank you for being just you and authentic and genuine. Uh, I just love your your hunger for growth and the fact that you're going hard after it. So some people might say, boy, Paige just got real lucky. Keep in mind, how lucky is it to make the decision to go DM literally hours before the pandemic hit. It was literally in February. You decided to do this before the March mm -hmm. pandemic and look at you. Um, yeah. What a great testament to uh, what the Vector Opportunity can do in a short period of time if you're uh, dedicated and you're just radically sold out to growing and, and supporting your people. Thank you so much for coming out today, Paige. This has been an outstanding masterclass. I'm really excited to be able to get this, this out to people. Folks, we're going to stop recording in just a moment here, but uh, again, if you've been looking to connect with Paige, that was pageweber0 at gmail.com. You can, of course, reach out to me, tbooth at cutco.com. We'd be more than happy to support you in either way there. And we'll look forward to our next masterclass. We're not on uh, next week. In fact, uh, we're taking the week off. I believe that there is a uh, women's mastermind next Wednesday. It's at 4 o'clock Eastern. So make sure that you're inviting your friends, any woman in TLA or above, uh, is welcome to attend that. And uh, uh, in my opinion, the more people we can have attending that, uh, the better. So thank you everybody for joining us this week. Paige, last word is yours officially. This is awesome. Thanks for having me. Um, again, reach out, any questions, anything like that, more, more than happy to help you. I hope you crush your interviews. Again, talk to your DVMs before you make changes. Um, don't, don't do anything that I wouldn't do without consulting my DVM first. So um, happy to help. Thanks for jumping on here, guys. And I look forward to chatting with y'all soon.